about seniors, especially that love football. They got a lot of experience. We don't give up. We do the small things right. Sophomores and freshmen have really stepped up to help out. And this year, we're going to be resilient. You know, I'm no longer holding the guys accountable. They're doing it to each other. Our team speed is like nothing we've ever seen before. We're going to build off last year and do even better this year. Never get satisfied and never get complacent. Obviously trying to do something that we've never done before. Trying to make history. The high school football season has gotten off to a pretty good start. What's going on, friends? We have made it. 2023 prep preview, which is extra special this year, as you saw there, because it is now and will be known as the Pat Lund Prep Preview. That's right. It's about time Pat's name was put on this. Prep preview was truly his baby. Starting this show because he loved high school sports, the teams, and communities. It's an honor to be doing this now with my main man, Nick Speliopoulos. Thanks, Julian. That's right. An honor to continue this tradition, this standard set by Pat. So let's get rolling. Every section, every district, you name it, we got it. And we'll start here in Rochester. All right, and here we go. The Lord Eagles head coach Mike Kessler and his squad looking to build off a strong 7-2 and two season, which could be more if not for a game-winning drive from PEM in the section semifinals. A number of players from that group are back this year, including senior QB Adam Sellner, sophomore running back Caleb Akinbalu. Both are poised for strong seasons. On the defensive side, Lord will look to keep things going with a defense that held teams to 17 points a game last year. Kessler describes this group as together and the experience they have invaluable. Specifically, he says the strength this year is the linemen on both sides. The Eagles have some size and are excited to battle in the trenches. All in all, this Lord team feels it can be dangerous in 2023. The term dangerous comes in because there's not really a weak link. Uh, we look at our starting spots and everyone's been putting the same work, everyone's been together, we all have the same goals, so I think when everyone's on the same page like that, it's going to be really hard to stop. We just got to focus one week at a time. I think we got a potential as a football team to do some special things, um, but a lot's got to happen. Now, potential's one thing, but getting there is another, you know, uh, reaching it. So. Uh, if everybody could take care of their job and worry about the guy next to them more than themselves, um, that's, where, that's where we could be dangerous. From Rochester, let's head out now to the Chosen Valley. The Chatfield Gophers have certainly been the chosen ones over the last couple of years, making back-to-back -back prep bowl appearances with one state title. Last year, the group went 12-1, falling to Barnesville in the state championship. Things now will look a bit different at Chatfield. 19 seniors are gone, headlined by Sam Backer in his second most rushing yards in state history. This 2023 team has six starters coming back. One of them is Parker Delaney, who was the hero of the state tournament in 2021 and been in at QB over the last two seasons. Head coach Jeff Johnson says this year is going to be about getting better with every week. But just because this group is young doesn't mean they aren't ready. They played in a lot of football games last year, so just because they weren't starters doesn't mean that, that they're not experienced. So uh, we've got uh, quite a bit of playing time experience coming back, and uh, we've got a senior group that um, are, are, are pretty salty too, and they've been there uh, twice already. So uh, they're ready to go, and they're ready to have their own year. Just kind of grinders, you know. We don't have the skill we did last year, but we're just playing a lot harder and working a lot harder for what we got. A lot of Young guys stepping in, we're ready to go. A lot of guys want to play, haven't got the opportunity, and I think we got a lot to show. In Bluff Country, the Caledonia Warriors, Coach Frickty maintaining a program that was dynasty-esque in the mid to late 2010s, five consecutive state championships. The Warriors haven't made it out of sections since, most recently a two-point loss to Chatfield in the section championship. This year, the Warriors host the Gophers in week six, they know it's possible, and they're not jaded to the significance of a trip to the bank. Just, uh, it'd be great to get back just to honor all the great alumni and, and of course, this senior class. You got to have a few breaks, too, and uh, I'd like to think that in Section 1, 2A football, we play very good football. You got to give credit to our opponents. Um, they're doing a great job, um, but that's not taking anything away from our young men. We're, we're very proud of them. We think they're working hard. Right now, that's my biggest goal in life. I want to get to that state championship and prove that we can do it. We, we have maybe less talent, but we have just as much commitment as a team to do what they did. On the banks of the Mississippi, we come to Lake City. The Tigers finished the 2022 season three and six. Over the summer, wide receiver Keegan Ryan committed to the University of North Dakota football, but he's not the only key piece returning to the Tigers squad. Jaden Shones started last year and will be QB1 
as a senior. And watch for another young guy, Aaron Liu. He can line up in the slot or in the backfield with an ability to take it the distance anytime he touches the ball. The Tigers open at St. Charles and Coach Narum likes where his team is at this point in the season compared to last year. Um, a lot of those kids that were young last year are back. We, we return a lot of experience. So um, from a confidence standpoint and a knowledge standpoint, you know, we're far ahead of where we were from last year at this point in time. I think we have a really good team. I'm looking forward to just being able to play with all my friends and stuff, but I think we could be able to go really far. I feel like we have a hard schedule, but I think we also have uh, a really good team and I think we'll do good. Um, last year, we had a glimpse of what we could be this year. We have a lot of talent and I hope that we have a better winning season this year. Let's head out to the dog pound next with the Plainview Elgin Melville Bulldogs. It's a new era in PM this year. As longtime head coach Kevin Lamb steps away. Darren Winger will now be at the helm. He's been the defensive coordinator for PM the past few seasons. The Bulldogs are coming off a strong campaign, 7-4, another, another section championship appearance. As a program, PEM has been stacking good seasons. That's in 2021, the team finished as state runner-ups. 2023 begins for the Bulldogs with a tough matchup right out of the gate. Week 1, PEM sees Cannon Falls in a rematch of last year's section title game. It will be a test for a team looking to see if its youth can take the next step from last year, but the Bulldogs are excited. We've got some great returning guys. Uh, we, I thought we were really young last year. We, we had six or seven starters that were sophomores last year, so we had uh, great youth last year that are building onto this year that are now juniors. Um, so really looking forward to seeing how those guys progress throughout the year and, and how they put it all together. I'm very excited for this year. I think we have a lot of studs coming out this year, a lot of strong alignments, so I'm pretty excited for our run game this year. And uh, last year we made it to the section chip and lost, but uh, I have high hopes we have a lot of returning players, so I think we got a lot of um, good things coming this year. Now we arrive at Cannon Falls. The Bombers rolled their way through 2022, finishing with a 10-2 record, both losses four points or less. Heading into the new season, they're moving to Section 4, 2A. The Bombers won't get a rematch with either of their losses from last season, but do have a trio of 3A teams on the schedule this season. Week 1, the aforementioned PEM, Three is Pine Island and week five at La Crescent. The change hasn't affected what they want to accomplish in 2023. Uh, last year was pretty good. We came a little short. Um, first round of state playoffs, but this year we hope to be state champs. I learned that you really got to give it your all. If you don't give 100% all the time, you're going to fall a little bit short like we did last year, and I'm hoping for this year we uh, get that state chip. We got a lot of good players coming back this year, and obviously southeastern Minnesota football is so tough. There's a lot of good teams out here. We're, you know, we're just focusing not really on, on who we're going to be playing against, but focusing on making our team as, as good as we can going into the season. Let's head to Dodge Center next, where it is year two, the Brandon Nesseth era for Triton. In year one, the Cobras went four and five, building a foundation for this current season where things will look a bit different. The Cobras are moving to section two, double A, so the team will see some different opponents Triton does not get a break early in the first four weeks. The Cobras see Maple River, Blue Earth Area, Caledonia, and Chatfield on the field. Nesseth says the Triton, Triton will be trying some different things. He's excited to see the continued growth for the program. Uh, last year, I think we were a pretty uh, run-heavy team. We were option-based. Uh, we'll do a little bit of that still, but I think we're going to throw the ball a little bit more. Uh, we'll have a sophomore quarterback, uh, Pierce Petershawn, who's done a lot of good things throughout the summer, um, and I think he's going to allow us to open up the offense a little bit, but still carry on some of that stuff that has uh, you know, made trite football what it is in the past. So we're going to uh, experiment a little bit with some of these uh, passing concepts, but we like how Pierce has handled it so far. Everybody's just ready, you know. Everybody's ready to get that chance under the Friday Night Lights and just get going, playing some ball. And we're just getting started here on Prep Preview. Still ahead, we'll break down teams from District 9 Southeast and the Big Southeast. But first, we round out our trip through the Southeast and see what's going on in the Mid-Southeast. Don't touch that remote. Prep Preview continues after the break. <laughs> 